A new feature in Photoshop, Adobe shows tips whenever you're using generative fill. Right now we're going to look at Adobe's tips, there's 14 of them, and I'll add a couple of my own. First tip, keep the taskbar at your fingertips. Simply go to the three dot menu and pin the taskbar to a position you prefer. To show the bar, go under Window, Contextual Taskbar, hit the menu, Pin Bar Position. It will stay wherever you put it, including after a relaunch now, yay. Only select what you want to change. Generating will completely change the content in your selected area. So if we wanted to put a t-shirt on her, if we grab the lasso tool and we start high, we're going to get a short t-shirt. If we go here, it can be longer because it's not going to generate side outside of that area. So I'm going to add to that. If you want sleeves, make sure you select enough of the model that it can add sleeves because it will not generate outside of that area either. And if we click on the variations, you can see the options we get. For more precise control, try drawing your selection in the shape you want to generate. The shape means everything. So say we want to create a hat. Watch what happens if I go wide. And we'll just type in the word hat. All right, we've got this nice selection of wider hats. Let's go taller. And we get more of a party hat. And if you're getting any value out of this video, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, you won't miss any of my videos. Remember, when you're using Generative Fill, the selection tool is not a selection tool anymore. It's a guidance tool because you don't have to select things precisely. You just need to tell it, hey, these are the areas where you can generate and these are the areas you can't. Try adding feathering or opacity to help generated content blend into your scene. Start with quick mask mode. All right, so we want to make a selection. I just double click this and I want to change the color indicates the selected areas. Click OK. Let's hit the Q key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a brush. Now, if we choose black, this is going to give us 100% opaque. If we go white, it's going to be 100% transparent or somewhere in between. So let me click OK. We're going to grab our brush. Let's make it a pretty hard edge brush. So what I'm going to do is make it solid on top and partially transparent underwater. I'm not going to take the time to do a perfect selection, but we're just going to paint here. And right now we're painting with 100%. That's the black. Now, if you wanted this to be perfect, you make selections around those edges. I'm not going to bother. Let's change this to a lighter shade of gray. And we're going to paint underneath. And by the way, I got this idea from my friend Jesus Ramirez from Photoshop Training Channel. So check out his excellent tip on doing this with a goldfish. All right, so now we want to change this to a selection. Hit the Q key, and you'll notice that you don't see the bottom part. The reason you don't see the bottom part is it's less than 50% opaque. So it's still selected, but you only see the marching ants when it's over 50%. So we're going to hit Generator Fill, and let's just type in Whale. And here you can see the top is opaque, and the bottom part looks like it's underwater. You can move a generative layer and regenerate it in a new position. So say I wanted to draw a truck. Make a selection here. Choose green truck and generate. All right, so say we've got that one, but we'd rather have it over the other side. Because this generative layer is just in the shape of the selection, I could grab this with the move tool and drop it on the other side and then just hit generate. Now the caveat, it's not going to create the same truck you're going to get three new variations, but they are going to blend into the background. So what if you don't want a new track, but you want that previous track in that new position? Let me give you one of my own tips. Let's just hit, und hit undo a few times. And then what we do is just move that track into the new position. Now we're going to do a select subject. Grab the object selection tool, cloud, select subject. Let's save this selection, select, Save selection. Call it track. So what we want to do is select the generative area. Let me hide the background just so you can see what's going on. Hold down the control or the command key and just click on the mask. Now we've loaded that selection. I'll turn the background back on. You don't have to hide the background. That was sh purely for me to show you what was going on. So let's choose select. 
load selection. We want to grab our track. That's the selection we saved. And we want to subtract that from the selection. Click OK. So we've now selected that generative layer minus the track. Then we can just hit generate a fill and generate without putting anything in. And it will blend it into the background for us. And of course we get three variations. Same track, just different type of blend. You can write a prompt in more than 100 languages now. I only know one language, so we'll move on. Didn't find what you were looking for. Generate new variations. All right, let's go back to the shirt layer. Yes, you can go back to layers you've generated before. And we can hit generate again here or up there. Without changing the prompt, it's just going to give us three more variations. Number two, number three. Now notice this generated a tank top. Because we selected the arms, it doesn't have to fill that whole area, but it will use that area. Had you made a selection here with out doing the arms, it would not be able to generate any sleeves because those areas are not selected. Trim file sizes by deleting unused variations, perfect for managing those high res images. So every time we hit variation, it's going to create a new variation and it's going to add to the file size. If we know we're only going to use this one image, we can just hit the trash can next to the other ones. Deleting those and keeping the file size nice and low. To remove content, try generating without a prompt and we'll fill the selection based on the surroundings. This is like content aware fill. Grab the lasso tool, makes us a rough selection around the area you want to replace. Doesn't have to be precise. Hit generate fill and generate. That's it. And bingo. Avoid using instructions like add, fill, make and change. Instead, describe what you want to generate. So if we want a boat, we'll make a selection. And we don't type in add a boat, we just simply type in boat. And here's another one of my tips. If you generate something and it's not quite what you want, like maybe the back of this boat looks a little bit weird, you can change just part of it. So let's take the back of this boat. The front is fine, but the back is weird. Hit generate a fill and we'll type in boat. And here we have some different variations. That one looks better. And this one can seem like a little bit of a contradiction. When you don't want to generate something, commands like remove, no, or without can help. So say I want to generate a glove. So I want a black glove, but I don't want it to be velvet. Hit generate. So instead, we'll get other materials. And if you've ever seen Gattaca, she's ready for playing the piano. Need more room? Explore Generative Expand from the Crop Tool to broaden your image's horizons. All right, so let's zoom out. Grab the Crop Tool, make sure under Fill, we change this to Generative Expand. And if it's always expanding, change it to something else. And we'll go nice and big here and just hit Generate. And we get a new background. The next one, dreaming up a new background. First select your subject, then invert to select the background. Describe what you want to generate. Let's change this. So let's grab the object selection tool. Under select subject, choose cloud. And we'll load our selection. Let's inverse the selection. Command shift I. Control shift I on Windows. And let's fill it with something else. So let's hit generate a fill. And let's choose a beach. And hit generate. Notice it blurs the background to respect the depth of field. And if you wanted to make these selections better, just make sure you clean them up on the mask before you generate the background. But this is not a masking tutorial. You know how to do that. Let's move on. Next tip, got feedback? Rate or report your results to let us know where we can improve. So you can hit the menu here. And you can rate these. I don't think that's great. I'm going to hit poor on that one. And then you can tell them why it's poor and add a note. So this is how you can send your feedback to Adobe. And if you want to go beyond these tips, check out my course I did on generative fill uh, link underneath with a discount. So drop a comment underneath and let me know what your favorite tip was. So if you want to know more about generative fill, check out this other tutorial I've done. If you're new to the cafe, welcome. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications. You won't miss any of my tutorials. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.